Hi, Bonbon here. So you want to make a map? Well, that's easy. The basics are simple to master and you can have something ready to play in a matter of minutes. But it probably won't be very good. If you're taking that first step into gaming map design, there's a lot of things you should consider. Ask anyone involved in the map design teams at, say, Rockstar Games, for example. As a company, you can see how their maps have evolved in design complexity as the years have progressed, and the systems have become more and more capable of handling bigger and more detailed landscapes. Their maps aren't just intended to be a pseudo-realistic recreation of a location, though. No, they are laid out to aid in the storytelling in the game world itself, and that requires far more than just five minutes of planning. So when making a map for city skylines, it can also help to do at least some planning in advance, whilst understanding the core essentials along with the basic desires of most players. And for this, some rough sketches on scrap paper can be a great way to start. Here's some digital paper I made earlier. There are two styles of map creation, using pre-made terrain height maps as a template, or working completely freehand. Behind these two, there's a large crossover, including editing a height map in an image editor, or simply doing lots of creative freehand work on an imported height map. At the time of recording, the best City Skylines height map resource is linked into the description below. I do recommend performing your own searches though, as this video may be years old by the time you see it, and resources are notorious for being short-lived. Imported height maps are a great way to start for providing realistic shapes for your terrain, but these should always be reworked in the map editor as they often have clear digitization and can have many random spikes and troughs. Working completely freehand is liberating, but producing a realistic environment is a skill unto itself. Have fun, but don't get too disheartened if your grand plan ends up looking like molded mashed potato. So, Anyway, the entire map is approximately 18 kilometers by 18, broken into tiles of approximately two kilometers by two. The center 25 tiles are by far the most important as these are the only ones that base game players will ever have access to. What you do in these 25 tiles effectively carries far more weight than the other 56 combined. Not that the other tiles don't matter, they really do. For example, with base game players, the inner ring of 24 tiles will potentially border the outskirts of their city, and if this area looks shoddy, it may spoil their screenshots. The outer ring of 32 tiles will be permanently cloaked in a curtain of fog, so this is the one place that shortcuts can be taken. However, many players use a mod to unlock all 81 tiles, and another to remove the clouds and the fog, and if you want to impress these guys, you'll want decent standards right up to the edge of the map. Regardless, there are still some basic techniques you can employ for both base game players and advanced players alike. So far, we've looked outwards towards the edge of the map. Now we need to look inwards towards the middle. There are two more vital mechanics we need to consider. The first is the start square, the location that you dictate to the player where they have to start building. You can choose any of the 25 playable tiles, but if you choose any in the outer edge, you'll be restricting the options for the first expansion by one or even two directions. There are of course exceptions to every rule, but normally you should consider using one of the center nine tiles to launch with. Speaking of nine, nine is the maximum number of tiles you can buy in the unmodded base game. So you really do want to make sure that your central 25 tile block has an absolute minimum of nine decently playable tiles. Ideally arranged so they can all link in with each other. Having an isolated tile which requires jumping over a mountain range or a series of distant unconnected islands will only frustrate the base game player. I'm not saying that there aren't occasions where this type of design would work, just that they are the exception rather than the rule. If you do have a scenario style map or one which is deliberately challenging, this is absolutely fine. Just make sure that you tell your potential subscribers what to expect in advance. 
There are multiple different styles of map to choose from, including coastal, river, alpine, lakes, island, and so on. Knowing what you want to build before you start is the very first step. If this is your first map, I suggest either a coastal or a lake based map, as running water is a challenging skill even for an experienced builder, and making hills and mountains look realistic is way harder than it sounds. If building coastal, you'll want a significant part of your shoreline crossing through some of your centre 25 tiles, if you want to attract base game style players that is. Whilst lakes will want to be large enough to be interesting, but not eating up too much of that prime land. Consider planning their shorelines to allow for interesting development as tiles are unlocked. So plot yourself a rough map design, including very general routes for your highways and rail, but more on networks in an upcoming episode. Now, clearly, there's no great need for accuracy on this rough plan. But just by making these notes, you might find that your fledgling map isn't quite as interesting as your grand plan had in store. And this will give you the chance to tweak it before you even start spending any time in the map editor. And yes, 324 square kilometers is a lot of space to fill. Even a plain two kilometer tile with no features or landmarks can feel very empty indeed, even in the most talented of hands. These expanses can be broken up in a number of different ways. You could create pockets or extensions of your forests. Farmland in logically fertile areas away from your start square makes a lot of sense. You can create small hills or even lakes to force the player to break away from their sprawling metropolis. Remember though, you aren't just breaking up the geography of the map, but of each individual tile. When segmenting each tile, think in halves and thirds. Anything smaller than a third of a tile, about 80 cells, becomes a challenge for a city builder to work with. You can do this, but if continued across the entirety of the map, it could be off-putting to the player. Anything larger than half a tile without some kind of visual break becomes an aesthetic wilderness. So consider that seam of trees or whatever fits with your map somewhere across the middle. Once finished, this sketch is going to be the general blueprint for your map to be built upon. But don't worry if you find yourself veering from the plan whilst in the editor, which you almost certainly will. Map creation is a living process and changes both small and large are common with all creators. But knowing in advance that a certain tile will contain mostly forests or whatever, means you can skip around this until you start filling in the trees and declutters your head of a future task. So now you can put away your rough plan to one side because next we've got another sort of planning to do, that of general aesthetics but more on that in the next episode. That's it from me today. To be sure of catching the full series, subscribe and hit the notification bell now. Bon Bon Buddies get early access to this show, so if you really can't wait, now's a great time to start supporting the channel by clicking the join button down below or jumping over to patreon.com forward slash Bon Bon B. Thanks for watching to the very, very end. I've been Bon Bon B and you've been very, very welcome.